NBA 2K22 is releasing this September, but the ratings are already fresh off the press, and when they dropped, so did the jaws of many who felt bewildered by some of the decisions made by the powers that be. Be sure to click the subscribe button and check out the links in the description for more latest Hoops content. Where do we even begin? To say that some of the players were confused by the ratings in this game is an understatement, to say the least. Jason Tatum didn't take it too well. His initial pitch of where he stood in his own ratings was revealed in a recent interview where he stated, I think you gotta set the base at 92. It's 95 by the end of the year. Once told his overall was 90, his response was, You're on 90. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know how we I don't know how we keep going backwards. I scored 50 in the playoffs twice, four 50 point game, tie Larry Bird record, 27 a night. I guess we're buried to bad day. I see. <laughs> the 23-year-old has already broken a series of Boston Celtics records, let alone NBA ones. So to be fair, he has a point. This feat made him the third youngest player in the NBA playoff history to reach 50 plus points in one game. The other two are former NBA Finals MVP and champion Rick Barry and greatest of all time, Michael Jordan. Improving his yearly scoring average exponentially surely provides Tatum with a sound argument that after having a 91 rating on 2K21, it dropped to 90 for 2K22 might be a little unfair and maybe even pretty illogical. Speaking of illogical, a 94 overall rating for Luka Doncic doesn't sound bad, until you put it in context with Embiid starting at 95 overall for the season. Not only was Doncic a back-to-back all-star at 22 years of age, but his playoff stats were unbelievable. His ability to elevate his game in the postseason was almost unprecedented with 49% from the field and 40.8% from three-point range. He also averaged 10.3 assists per game and an unreal 35.7 points per game in a close-fought seven-game series against the tough LA Clippers. Then to have Joel Embiid have the same overall rating as Kawhi Leonard is pretty baffling. We're not saying Joel isn't good, we're not saying he hasn't improved. I mean, he had a career best regular season points average with 28.5 this year and field goal percentage high of 41.3%. But, and it's a big but, Kawhi Leonard averaged a better field goal percentage and more points when it matters, in the playoffs. While Joel's size makes him a great rim protector, Kawhi is a better all-around defender and offensively offers more assists. So the stats tell us some home truths, but the truth is also there to be seen when a game is on the line. Kawhi is a clutch player. He finishes games when they need finishing. And we're still not clear of his biggest clutch moment, which sticks out in recent memory. The only ever Game 7 buzzer beater winner, which ironically was thrown over Joel Embiid's head. It's off to Leonard, defended by Simmons. Is this the dagger? The good news for Joel is Kawhi doesn't say much, so it's likely he'll just stay quiet and get on with business of reality rather than a video game. <laughs> Another man who has level with Kawhi and Embiid was Jokic. Lest we forget his rating. Drops from a 96 to a 95 after winning the regular season MVP with career high points per game, 26.4. Career high assists per game with 8.3 and career-high rebounds per game with 10.8. The man still managed a playoff high of 29.8 points per game, and who knows how far the Nuggets would have gone had his sidekick Jamal Murray been there to help. Kevin Durant responded to his rating via TikTok saying, I think I should be a 99, even though he was rated top with a 96 along with Steph, Giannis, and LeBron. He continued by saying, I think my rating should be a 99 on 2K. I work extremely hard. I can make shots from all over the floor. Um, I'm a solid passer. I think I'm a great passer, a great rebounder. Yeah, I pretty much do everything great. That's why I should be 99. The Brooklyn Nets then commented on his tweet saying, Don't hear a single lie. This was of course met with much backlash by opposing fans who responded ferociously, despite KD's incredible comeback year and heroics in the playoffs. Just remember his playoff average this year was a career-high 34.3 points per game and 9.3 rebounds per game, and all this after a year of following a horrific injury. With or without the context, how can you blame KD for thinking he's a 99 when he nearly single-handedly ended the Bucks' championship run? Trey Young sounded off on his rating, tweeting, Feel like we do this every year. Y'all ever gonna get it right? His rating went from an 87 last season to an 89 this year, which he clearly wasn't satisfied with, especially with the hashtag, can't play it yet. For a player who led the Hawks to the Eastern Conference Finals with a 28.8 points per game average and dropping a playoff career high 48 points and 11 assists against the eventual champions, the Milwaukee Bucks, can you blame him for feeling snubbed? 
The Hawks questioned the ratings too in a recent tweet as Young took these underdogs to their first conference final in six years, the hard way. He went through the supposed 95 overall rated Joel Embiid and his 76ers, who were tipped to at least make the conference final following their so-called easy pathway in the postseason after finishing top in the Eastern Conference. Young deserves more credit for the year. We'd say at least a 90 overall rating. The top dunkers left some questions on the floor too as Zion took the top shot with 97 and dunk contest competitors Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon joined second on 95. With new kid on the block Zion now entering his second season, this seems relatively fair considering his remarkable athleticism. Then to follow it up with two-time NBA dunk contest champion Chicago Bulls star Zach Levine and twice second place Aaron Gordon, it seems legitimate. The bizarre call however not to put Giannis in the top 5 left some people very perplexed. The two-time MVP and now finals MVP has made a name offensively, not just with his Euro step, but being able to charge his long, strong frame down the lane and slam over pretty much every rim protector in sight. As we've mentioned in previous videos, the Giannis wall no longer works. To leave him out of the top five is a little disturbing, especially when you stick Ja Morant ahead. While smaller in size and still capable of creating the spectacular, that doesn't change that Giannis can do it just as well and with greater ease. <laughs> as for the three-point ratings, Steph Curry won't be able to argue as he has a firm grip at the top of the leaderboard with 99. Despite the Golden State Warriors' lackluster season, Steph put on a sensational display with 42.1% from three and a career-high 32 points per game. And just because Klay Thompson is recovering from injury doesn't mean he didn't deserve to sit in second place with a 95 three-point rating. Klay will likely always sit as the second-best three-point shooter of all time, so he deserves some respect put on his name. Before his first big injury, he shot a career-high 44.3% from three in the playoffs in 2019. Don't doubt his ability to come back and pick up where he left off with the strongest part of his game. The next three down may come as a shock to most. Primarily Pat Connington, who tweeted thinking faces next to the top five list exclaiming Damian Lillard should be in there. He's not necessarily wrong when Dame's three-point percentage falls around the 45% mark for the postseason. Joe Harris was someone who sneaked above him with a 93-point rating. We actually think this is low. Harris should be reaching for a 92 or 93. Why? Well, let's start by saying that Harris had the best three-point percentage in the regular season last year with 47.5%. Setting a franchise record for the Nets, Harris became the fastest player to knock down 100 three-pointers in a season, doing it in 10 games less with only 31 games played, beating the previous record with 41 games. He then offered up superb production with 40.2% from three in the playoffs. There's a reason why he also took the three-point contest by storm two years ago. Seth Curry landed on the same three-point rating and thoroughly deserved it as he hit an astonishing 45 percentage from three-point range in the regular season and 50.6 percent in the postseason. The numbers don't lie. And Duncan Robinson hitting 40.8 percent from three last season gave him the same rating but fifth spot on the leaderboard. Other players chimed in like Mello, who was given an 84. He tweeted, no 99s? And added a few sleep emojis. In the same vein, LeBron James responded to the tweet asking if he agreed with Steph's rating of 96. And the King simply responded, nah, should be 99. He did the exact same with KD, so who knows if it's ironic or not, especially with the shrug emoji added to both. Dame retweeting his overall of 94 means he's probably pretty happy with it. If he cares, that is. Either way, it looks like Connington will fight his battles for him. And finally, James Harden caused quite a stir when ESPN asked for the public's thoughts on the top 10. He threw down three laughing emojis, so clearly he thinks it's a joke that his rating has dipped somewhat. And to be honest, he has a point, especially when he had the second best regular season field goal percentage of his career at 47.1% and a very strong playoffs despite his injury problems in the postseason. Even Skip and Shannon got involved on Undisputed, arguing whether LeBron was admitting KD is the best in the world or just complimenting him. The conversation soon spiraled out of control and into the usual LeBron goat debate. All right, I believe Kevin Durant should be a 99, mm. but it seems to me, Skip, they've kind of tightened it down with the ratings because no one has been a 99, if I'm not mistaken, since 2014. However, what did come of it was Shannon's ratings. He has KD, LeBron, and Giannis all at 99 and Steph at 98. Whatever the weather, this isn't the final ratings for NBA 2K22. They'll change every two to four weeks. As players go on streaks, improve their game, or drop off, they'll go up and down accordingly. But the opening rating is certainly a marker for where the game sees them today. And no matter what team you're a fan of, there's no doubt some of these are incredibly questionable. But as new Hawks point guard Dellen Wright aptly summed it up, it's that time of year again when people who don't play NBA 2K argue about the ratings. And why not? The summer league is over and the regular season is yet to begin. Gotta have something to argue over. Comment below to let us know your thoughts and be sure to subscribe for more. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss another one of our videos.
We'll see you next time, latest hoops fans. Until then, keep shooting your shot.